back now for a semi-final matchup. Now we, uh, if you've been tuning in, in to us this entire time aboard the Miss Hunter on Black Sun Radio, you will definitely recognize both these names as you've seen both of them win on stream before. Mike, of course, was our day one first game winner with his really unique T70 list. Crazy nine up. Yeah, he's opted this time, however, to go with a different list for his finals. Now it's actually a little bit interesting. We should explain to people how this works because last round was our first uh, was our first top cut That's round. Right. Uh, but how it works now is once you make the top eight, the list you choose for the top eight is the list you run for the rest of that top eight should you end up winning. Dun, dun, dun. So Mike was able to win last match with this B-Wing list that he set up. It's it's very, very close to the same B-Win. Actually, it is the same B-Wing that Eric Z used to get himself this gorgeous That's map right. that we're playing on. Just unfortunately for Mike, Eric apparently is more well-liked than him. I don't know. How did that work out? We'll ask Eric to let us know how that happened, but we like you, Mike. Don't worry. And Mike actually took out triple K wings, bombs, and everything. Absolutely. Last round. Unfortunately, uh, Don K, our resident bomb lover, he was not able to let us see his bomb, 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 bomb bombs. So let we didn't get a chance. See the bomb. <laughs> we weren't able to sing that song for you on air, but don't worry. Next time we will have it. Uh, so let's talk quickly about uh, Tristan's list. Is the same one that he had. To, That's right. To a resounding success, uh, he's comfortable with it. It's 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 heavy. And everybody doesn't seem to see it coming. Now, we've got a really interesting setup here. Sorry for cutting me off here. But you see a giant cluster of asteroids on the board, top of the board. And then we see all of our ships pointing at each other. Do you think Mike's going to try to joust Tristan? I think that's what he's setting up for. I don't like that. I don't like that either. Having seen Tristan's list a few times in action, everybody type, type, takes a look at it and says, Oh, two Z95s? Meh. Oh, Y wing with stress dog? Yeah, that's cute. Oh, two X-Wings? Oh, sure, they haven't been good since, like, wave ever. And then you try to joust it, and you're like, but my ships. My ships, <laughs> my, ships my boss. My, my ships are all broken. My blues. <laughs> right? Even, even, even Kristen, who, uh, Christian, who Tristan was able yes. to beat last round to go through, was like, well, I looked at the list, and I didn't think it was all that good, and then, then, I, then I pointed myself at it, and what happened? And that's exactly it. That was my really bad Trist, uh, Christian impression. Sorry. That doesn't sound right to me. No. I okay. do want to note that last round, Tristan played Christian, who was on stream before, and mm -hmm. beat national champion Alan Fung the Hair uh, with five weird bombers. Mm -hmm. And last round, he played Omega Leader, Quick Draw, and... Quiz. The Quiz, that's right. With Brockets. And Tristan played this list, and he won. So not both of these gentlemen that are on stream right now played... Two very strong meta type lists mm -hmm. and lost Absolutely. against what people would look at and go, eh, B wings. And that's again, which is really, we're really, really happy to showcase these two pilots because, again, in true spirit of the PTL, that really does showcase how creative, effective list building, understanding your list, and high player skill can sometimes eke out against quote unquote meta lists. Uh, Tristan obviously is, is used to seeing meta lists he's, he right. took, he, as he took this list to Naboo and did quite well with it. Uh, we would love to have had Mike uh, with us join us on the party bus. He wasn't able to make it happen, but I feel like he would have flown this or his Triple T-70 list had he come. Yeah. Um, now, for we'll quickly run through Mike's list because it is new. So we've got Shara Bay, which all of us have seen a couple of times now. She's quite phenomenal in what she can do. Her ability to share her target locks is really, really awesome. She's also rocking Weapons Engineer and M9G8, which is really, really key for Mike's list because his blues are the way he loves to build them. Mm -hmm. He always runs his blues with advanced sensors. That's what you'll see. His one template is almost completely worn through because he barrel rolls constantly before he does anything fancy, uh, opting not to use the fire control system here, and he doesn't really need it with Shara's M9G8 target locks. Mm -hmm. And then he's got two of them with Tactician and Ion Cannon, which, as we saw at the system open, was a pretty hotly contested mini swarm because yes. it's a really cool build on a ship. It's a lot of control because with that reroll, you don't want to get ioned, and he can... I mean, I've played, and he ioned... Uh, he eye on my dash off the board or a full oh, full, a full point K wing off the board without That's dropping scary. a single bomb. Yeah, and it's um, and low evade ships, there's almost nothing you can do. You're just gonna get ioned. So it's it's interesting to note that currently Tristan has the initiative. Mm. And generally you want your opponents to have the initiative. Uh, you want them to move first, you can see where they're going, maybe reposition. Mm -hmm. I think in this case, Mike probably wants to move would have wanted to move first especially with that well but you know what i think mike's process here is the fact that he's got that advanced sensors it wants to give his oh i like it it wants to give his uh ships a chance to kind of see what's going on before he decides um again i do like the idea of uh mike baiting out that first turn and saying you know what i want nothing to do with yeah. that level form but i mean the thing is the escape the the most logical vector for tristan's entire list 
is that what is that three bank right there that he's going to be able to take that lane anyways? So I've seen this happen before in mm-hmm. um, in Naboo with Tristan. Mm-hmm. He's not a prize to next turn, getting very close to that obstruction, shooting out that seismic torpedo as an action, pulling it out, and then he just has clear laneways to just pulverize his enemy. Especially if Mike decides, oh, I'm going to go too straight or move a little slower than you would think. That's actually the thing that we didn't get a chance to see in action last time Tristan right. was on stream, but he's he's commented quite a few times that um, a lot of people, especially at Naboo, he likes to set up these tight clusters of rocks. People always think they're safe from a swarm behind a set of rocks. They forget about the seismic torpedo. Tristan walks up, blasts the obstruction out of his way, and now you're looking at an entirely clear path for his swarm to come down and burn your house down. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you're like, you're like, okay, he's got seismic torpedo, and you don't think about it at the time. There's the pressure of being in the late game, playing a lot of games, mm-hmm. and then, boom, suddenly five ships have a laneway through, and there's nowhere you can go. You're you're in the tight rocks now, and you can't get out as quickly as you would have thought, yeah. and you're running away. It's not good always. And that's exactly it. I think a lot of, initially, when that, that uh, upgrade came out, a lot of us scoffed at it, saying, yeah, yeah sure, it's kind of cool to be able to potentially do damage in the activation phase. But, you know, it's not it doesn't always trigger and blah, 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 blah. And it's a waste of torpedo slot and extra munitions is better and all these other wonderful things. But we never really thought about applying it as a way to clear lanes for your swarms. It's mm-hmm. really, really cool. Not all the swarms have the ability to take it, though. And that's the key, right? Only Rebel Swarm could really take it. Or, mm-hmm. I guess, a Scum Swarm with, like, some weird stuff. Mm-hmm. But the General Swarms are more often than not Imperial and they're not taking any torpedoes. So, uh, Mike's going to cut it very, very close from that asteroid now on Hishara. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually think he's going to go over it no matter what he does at this point. Maybe a turn will go over it? I don't think he will turn. He doesn't have one He doesn't have a one what turn. What about a two turn? Uh, it's hard to, tell, that rock? hard to tell from this angle, but I'm assuming he's probably going to do two turns on everybody. Unless always he's, think he's going to turn in. Or he could do an advanced sensors, barrel roll his, his bees out of the way and do them two K turns and then give his, his Shara a place to slip in. But I think he wants to keep them all together. Yeah, the question is, if he turns around, what advantage did he really get from running away? Nothing. None at all, right? You just no. just having this joust happen in a different place. <clears throat> yeah, I don't. I, to be honest, I don't know. I think he probably wants to uh, plow forward through that space and and force Tristan to come through the rocks and maybe break up formation. Yeah, I'm not sure. So it looks like just seeing him flip over his dial there. It looks like he's thinking about the two turn mm-hmm. or two Ks. Yeah. So this is a very very difficult list to fly against, as we've seen. Tristan's list is. Yeah. It's a lot of arcs, it's a lot of ships, it's a lot of coverage, and then when you get into the scrum, it's a lot of blocking. And Mike doesn't really have a very high damage output on the list. He really wants to be there for the control with the ion cannons and with the tacticians. Uh, yep, see, here he comes. Now, the thing, control is wonderful to be able to do against high agility ships or uh, slippery aces and locking them down or to ion big bases off the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, this doesn't really get him much in this situation because Christian's still going to have three other ships that won't be ioned. That's right. It does break up his formation, however. And the tactician is good. Again, having played against Mike's list before, once you're stressed and you're getting ioned, you, you are very limited in what you do. You're, first of all, you're never getting an action again. Which means it's gonna be harder for you to evade. So he really couldn't just he really can just walk you off the board or walk you into rocks. That's right. So there is a lot of control in that list. Now I'm wondering if Tristan is gonna use the seismic torpedo. His guys are awfully close to it. You don't really wanna damage three or four of your own gentlemen. And there, do you? that's on that's the and that's the X Wing with seismic. The fact that he's moving the next one means he's focusing with them too as well. Yes. I don't think he has range for the seismic. It'd be close, but I don't think you're gonna use it either way. You're not that close to the debris and you're not going to put two three damage down exactly he can very easily two straight the entire list forward and then hard to uh ship left the whole list and that's when you seismic that little rock and get it out of the way and actually if mike is going to k-turn everything it might be worth your time just to do it next turn Mm -hmm. so he's going to advance senses for focus and do uh, and do okay so it's going to be a red maneuver on the beaming i believe that's right which is why he advanced sensors there they go yeah there they go super Of course, and I believe in canon, the B-Wing is quite a unique and high-end ship. But That's right. Wouldn't know it playing X-Wing. No, I'm joking. It's an, it's an awesome ship. It's great to see them back again. Yeah, absolutely. I've always liked the B-Wing. They're a very efficient ship. They have a lot of health and stuff. It's such a cool-looking ship, too. Um, and the whole concept of it having that gyroscopic t- uh, yes. attack pod that rotates around, and the whole ship rotates around the ship. Oh, so this is interesting. So I'm guessing this one's going to 2K? Or maybe 2-Bank. Or 2-Bank to stay in formation. Maybe he doesn't have to worry about being in front of rocks because mm-hmm. he can always advance sensors right mm-hmm. oh so he's yeah. got 3k around the other side of the rock that's nice again that's nice maneuver 
I think that's some good positioning, unless Tristan just says, meh, goes over the rock with all of his ships. And just hard, you know, just hard two of them in, who cares? Yeah, I mean, it is a stress hog, so it's not like the stress is going to matter to it. I don't think it matters to many of his ships, to be honest with you. I mean, the, the B-Wing has very low agility. It's a good point. I mean, again, I do I do like uh, Mike's position here. It's a really great idea to try to kite his ships through there. Now, that's definitely over the rock. Himself? No. He's good. He actually moved himself a little bit by accident as well, so, so he was definitely safe. Nice. So that's some slick piloting there on, on Mike's part. Uh, unfortunately, this for him, is not now, where you want to be. <laughs> Shara is facing down the the mouth of an angry rebel swarm. So off the bat, looks like he's probably going to get uh, one, two, three, and maybe four in that. I think X Wing Two is out of arc, or sorry, out of range. You think uh, so? I think based on the way that maneuver template went down, that would be my guess. There you go. So it's actually, pretty close. <laughs> that's actually no. You're right. That is. He's eating four shots, and he has. The very underplayed, very underloved Thread Tracers. Mm hmm Which uh, I think essentially with Guidance Chips, all Tristan has to do is get one hit result. On and three he's, dice. And, and that he's guaranteed for his Thread Tracers Here to comes the target locks. Yeah. Now, uh, Mike's decided to uh, reverse where his target locks were on Shara and put them onto the two lead Zs, which he can now force them to re-roll. It's a very smart defensive maneuver. Mm -hmm. I like that play. It's the best so he's he very made. close to being out of arc here, mm -hmm. which would not have been a good turn for Mike if he was going to eat four shots and not put any damage back. You got to get a ship off the table very quickly here. That's not what he wants to see. He's not. I don't think he's going to. He has expertise, so it's true. He's pro. Okay, here comes the dice, and that's two blanks. Yeah, might as well at this point. I don't think he's going to fire offensively. He might as well get the focus and mitigate damage on his ships. I like. I like the idea of mitigating damage on your higher health ships. I mean. Yeah, they have low evades, but I think when you have the chance to actually get an evade result, you should always take it because you want to keep your, your swarm around as long as possible. The efficiency of a swarm is really strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at just plain math, three naked dice, red dice versus the one naked defense dice, you're probably going to put the damage through. Agreed. So you might not need that focus. Yeah, so it's always better to spend that on a defensive setup. So I think Tristan might be thinking about shooting that thread tracer here. Do you think he wants to use the thread tracer on a ship that he can almost always hit with impunity? Uh, I think so. I mean, if you were to... Oh, so he's going against Smart. it. Smart. I like it. So he's done a very... He's decided to put all of his... Yeah. I like this call because Nora is... Sorry, so Shara is probably the ship that he wants to reduce actions on as much as he can. Yes, absolutely. Because of the fact that... Oh, so nothing. So what happened there was obviously Tristan used his attack and then Mike was able to use Shara's ability... Uh, the MNG8 ability to force him to do a reroll on his hit. Then he spent his target lock to do a reroll... Yep. Uh, so the, the target lock should come off soon at some point. Oh, I get it. No. No, M9G8. He just rerolled his nose spanning your target yeah, lock. Double M9G8. So sorry, folks. I might make that slip up once in a while. A lot of a lot of M9G8 love going on here. A yeah. lot of offensive and defensive rerolling going on. So we'll okay. see what happens. So first TLT puts Hits. damage through. Second. Even with the reroll. No, that was yeah, that was with the Shara Bay reroll. That's right. Yeah. Sorry, the M9G8 reroll. So Mike doesn't roll. Yeah. Two hits can avoid that. <clears throat> comes the second volley of TLT, going for one hit. Yeah, he'll fire so M9G8 re -roll. Re -roll on that one. And nothing. So this is, that was a very, he's got his own M9G8 reroll. And again, that was a really great call on Mike to move his M9G8 yeah, target agreed. locks onto the enemies. He's got, he's bought himself a lot of life on that. But, I mean, off the engagement so far, Tristan putting one damage on the arc versus the arc putting one damage on the, the Y-Wing. He's yeah. doing pretty good about that. Removing the actions from the arc is going to be Super huge in terms of damage output, and as well, it has expertise, so now it won't be shoot using its uh, its ability. Not only that, now Mike can't move Shara Bay's target locks uh, That's for right. defensive options for the next two rounds, which means he, Tristan knows exactly which two ships he can force rerolls on. Neither of them are his X Wings, and neither of, and only one of them is his Thread Tracer ship. That's right. So I think we're probably going to see him just dig in, and as long as as long as Z number one there is able to clear that debris without taking the stress, I think he focuses and fires Thread Tracers to target lock up his entire fleet onto Shara. I like it. So here comes um, some Zed shots by the looks of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we're waiting for. I'm not sure either. Mike's asking some sort of question. Nope. Okay. Alright guys, what's happening here? I'm sure. Just we're... feeling the dice for some love? Maybe rubbing them up, making them... I think he's trying to focus on... I think he's trying to decide target priority. He's trying to figure out who he wants to shoot. I think... I think he's thinking about the Thread Tracer shot now. Hmm. Which I don't hate either. Take it now. Everyone gets target locks. 
Then they can all blast through that debris and just fire away at Chara. Yeah, I agree. It's probably your strongest bet. I don't know why you wouldn't have shot it first, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, you much. mean before the Y Wing fired? Yeah. Well, the Y Wing has uh, already got the M9 G8, so can you. Yeah, you could carry a second target lock. You're right. Not sure. So Z2 there. So Z2 is firing threads, which makes sense. So all he needs is one hit. And he does not get it. Oh, well, he gets chips, the one hit with the chips. Chips from one, and he's got so, a hope. All right, here comes the tracers. And that's unfortunate. Mike really needed an evade. Yeah, Mike needed an evade. That would have helped him a lot. Yeah. And now you're going to see target lock, target lock, target lock, and target lock. I don't think number five is going to get a target lock. He's in within range, range one of the ship, isn't he? No, oh, he has to be able to acquire a target lock, though. That's exactly true. Well, but, they've put it down without measuring, so we should probably double check that. I guess uh, we can't. Well, Mike, really... oh, sorry, uh, Tristan already had a target lock from the rookie number five on the Y Wing with M9GA. Oh, and he wouldn't change so, that lock anyway. He's probably not going to change that lock anyways. They're just confirming locks, and it looks like he might good. actually be out of range, or is he in good? Uh, it looked good to me. Okay. Uh, it looks like they didn't put a target lock down, so. It looks like he was out of range. All right, well, that's, that's good for Mike. Yeah. I mean,. To be fair, um, Z number two still has threaders, who could also fire them right now and give the other two ships locks on them. I think well, he wouldn't bother. They these. couldn't reach, so they didn't get them, right? Mm. So you would just be wasting it. That's actually true. You're right. Sorry, I apologize. That's okay. It's a range on. It's range to the target, not range. That's to the right. All right. So reroll with M9 G8 never ends. All right. Focusing up for the two hits. I like Tristan's rolling style. You see how he just kind of underhands and pitches it in a lackadaisical. I don't care about you dice and that. That I think that efficiency. Uh. Yeah, he's like here, dice. I don't care if you hit, and it makes them want to hit for him. I think. I think that's what he's thinking. So instead of praying to the dice gods, you're insulting the dice gods. Not is that really, what you're supposed not to do? really insulting them. I just think that underhand pitch motion is is a patented Tristan's. So remember, the dice god is a vengeful god. We'll see. I mean, if I, I can't, I don't recall from Tristan's earlier game how his dice went. I, I remember the game going well for him, so I just don't remember. I how think his dice they weren't. They weren't anything spectacular, which is what you want. You want average dice. It's true. We don't want to have a game here where your opponent just get or one of the two players gets super awesome dice and the game ends. So here's an interesting situation for Mike. Now he can't advance sensor or anything, so he's gonna have to clear stress. His B wing stress clear mechanic isn't the greatest. They don't have the best dial to clear stress. Uh, a B wing three is very dangerous. Very dangerously close to that rock. He's probably going to hit that rock. I think so. I don't think there's a way around it. The question is, where is he going? Is he just going to two-turn? Uh, I think he has to. So with that information, does that mean that Tristan's probably just going to plow forward? Because uh, he can't... Well, you know what's even worse? Uh, B-Wing 2 can no longer three-turn because that would be red. Yep. And so, the two-turn isn't going to put you in where you want to be either. Well, he, unless, unless you want to be on rock, which I don't think anybody wants to do. Dash. Well, besides Dash. That's true. <laughs> no one wants to be on The Rock. That's some quality advice here. Mm -hmm. That's what you tune in for. You tune uh, in for the top tier advice. You turn in for that top tier advice. Eh, maybe you don't want to hit The Rock. You probably don't want to hit The Rock and you probably want to roll better than your opponent. That's how you do well in this game. Where's that arc going? I just have no concept. Is it running? Is it going to do a two-turn ship right and just get out of there? Uh, I guess. <laughs> like, I don't think there's a great place for it to be. Like, If it just goes straight and Tristan goes straight, then... So Tristan has initiative? Or Mike Tristan has initiative. initiative. But there's no repositioning happening. So, so, I mean, if we could step back to turn zero, as it were, with Tristan setting up his brick there, might it have been a better choice for Mike to have put his entire fleet uh, at the top of the board, away from Tristan's stuff? Because now he is kind of forced into that laneway. He could hard to the right, but that's not going to clear stress. And then Shara's probably going to get double stressed again, and that's going to be awful. He can't really get his B-Wings to engage in here now because of the position that they're pointing. You think we'll see a, a fancy seismic torpedo this turn as an action? I won't even lie to you. I don't think Tristan needs it. I think he, he doesn't need to, but it would be fun. I think he just like one slash three wheel his entire entire brick into a complete column that flanks the entire thing. I think that's probably your best course of action. Because right now that debris is actually causing more problems for Mike's fleet mm -hmm. than it's going to cause for Tristan. Do we need to be an arc for the seismic torpedo? Uh, I or is it just action up? I'm not actually 100% sure, to be honest with you. It's been a while since I've used it. As in, I've never used it. <laughs> it's been so, a while since, it's, since it came out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah we're looking up, so looking it up right now. It, you just discard this card. No, there is no range, but it is, it's, it's a range two. Yeah. It's a range one, two inside your primary arc. Okay, so, so you could just throw a thing and shoot somebody behind you, yeah. which would make no sense. Huh? So he wouldn't be able to get there now with it? Oh, uh, the force straight might be able to do it. He moves first, maybe. 
Um, but there, there would be no advantage in doing that to try to put one damage down. That's exactly what I'm saying. So. I think, in all honesty, as weird as it is, I, I don't particularly hate just flying over that debris. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any problem with that. Again, you still have the ability with, uh, with the Z number one to just casually go straight, grab mm -hmm. a focus, mm -hmm. and then everyone could have a target lock again if you wanted. Mm -hmm. You're not feeling bad about that. No, not in the slightest. And, and he's already sitting on a pretty decent amount of target locks. And, or he could just do the one straight with everybody, and, and I think maybe Mike's choice is to blast Nora straight ahead. But the arc's only green, green clearing maneuver forward is a two, or is it a three as well? Uh, the three as well, I believe, is green. Okay. So well, the three, three is not getting you out of there at all. No, three is going to end up roughly just a little bit ahead of that dial that we see there by ship three. So that doesn't That's get right. very far. And then, so if Tristan does decide to bank his entire fleet around that debris and just face it down, oofa the pain that we're going to see on Chara. I don't think there'd be a reason for Tristan not to do it. Like, I don't think he's going to care about stress, about any of that stuff, you know, just get in there. If you can kill one of Mike's ships, especially his heavy hitter early in the game like this, mm -hmm. you're, you're laughing. Because then... A huge part of his list disappears in the uh, M9G8 rerolls for his B wings. That's right. Because they don't have FCS, so they won't be able to gain that target lock reroll ability. They're right. going to be down to one action, which, as we know with most early wave ships, is where they're left behind in the current state of the game. That's right. So here comes the focus. I feel that's a strong option. So it looks like they're all just going to go the one straight. And then he's going to basically be able to turn in next turn. That's still a great call. I mean, there's no need for him to be crazy and wild and fly through debris like a maniac. I mean, there's a reason why he's at the top table and we're chilling out on the Mist Hunter. Because Mist we, we do crazy maneuvers and blow up and he does smart stuff and doesn't blow up. It's true. Mm-hmm. Can't argue that. Looks like everyone is clearing that debris. That's a nice little spot to be for mm -hmm. Mr. Wiley. Nicely done. Clearing his stress. So maybe Nora can get away. Or, so Nora. Uh, Shara can get away this turn. Three straight's going to put her out of a lot of arcs if she goes for three straight. But she won't get any shots. So, I mean... I think... I think not getting shot at by five ships is better than getting a shot on one and eating, sure. getting shot at by four of them. Sure. So I, I would call that a win. I think any time you don't have to take the shots from an entire swarm is a good call. Now, again, if he, if Mike did take Shara and go uh, to the uh, two right, mm -hmm. he's Tristan's laughing because he's going to get more shots on. Yeah, him. I don't think Mike would have done that. I mean, he's been we've seen him fly on stream. This is the second time now, mm -hmm. and he's been flying pretty safe. Mm -hmm. So, so this is interesting. Yeah, that's a white maneuver. Guess who's trying not to hit the rock? Yeah. It's just the B-Wings are just out of this game right now. Well, I think that's exactly it. I think the entirety of his list is out of the game, to be honest with you. He has to kind of reform. Does he avoid that? Or is he on it this time? Uh, That'll be their call? Yeah, it looks like Tristan might have touched it slightly, but... Well, they've got a better vantage point than we do, but that's that does true. look like it's on All right, right there. so Mike's saying it's on it. Yeah. Yeah, that okay. seems about right. So. Yeah, it looked like he was going to hit it. Okay, so potentially losing a shield here. And again, sportsmanship, calling out the fact that you know you hit something is, is a pretty cool thing to do, too. And still trying to eke out of saying, oh, let's go right. judge. There's you know? a shield. Ooh, that's unfortunate. You never want to shoot, you never want to lose damage to a debris token if you don't have to. Yeah. Or an obstacle, obviously, in this situation. All right, this is it. The dial's going to flip up. We're going to see where Shar is going. It's a... Uh, the other thing that's worse, though, is that both his B-Wings are still stressed. Uh, no. Isn't the two bank... Oh, two bank is not green. Okay, mm -hmm. so three straight. We called that. Uh, so you're going to love at least three shots. Yeah. All of which will be obstructed, which is nice for Mike. He's going to clear one stress and get back two again. He left the stress down there, though. I wonder... <clears throat> Maybe the three straight isn't green. I should know. I fly Braylon Strong pretty often. But then again, he doesn't care as much. He just kind of re-rolls them. If all goes well, uh, yeah. his ability will clear the stress for you. I don't have it Okay. Let me just double check that real quick. Cause yeah, we're going to keep our information as accurate as possible here. You know, we figure it's not a, ba it's not a bad idea to try to know what we're talking about. All right, so range, range one. one. So it's only going to be one stress going down. Mike didn't clear his stress. So I don't know if it's a may or a must, but I, either way, he probably should have pulled it off. Okay, let me just see here real quick. So the three straight on an arc is white, which is why he didn't right. the stress, and that makes sense. He went for max distance. Yeah, you'd have to make that three straight. Two straight would have been suicide. That would have been brutal, yes. I guess he figures he's got the M9GA defensive rerolls. Uh, he can afford to You're retake not. that. He's also going to be putting himself behind the debris, so he's going to give himself another die. You so, might slip into range one, so you're not taking more damage and more stress. Mm -hmm. You're not getting an action either way. Mm -hmm. So it's probably Ooh. the best call. Okay, two hits from uh, 
The hard hitting Y Wing is getting mm. a reroll for two hits. There you go. And, uh, Ooh, oh, there you go. spicy. Some spicy damage doesn't go through, which mm -hmm. is good. I'm telling you, I absolutely love that lackadaisical underchuck method of Tristan. It's, it's working for him. I'm going to start turning that. So, yeah, it's, like as you said, he drew himself into range one and looks like he's going to dodge that bullet. Yeah, that's what you need. That's super huge. And it's also good to note that the X Wings didn't grab target locks last turn, so they're mm -hmm. only throwing a focus. Mm hmm. Oh, no, it looks like it is in range two. Oh, okay. Uh, we roll one of those. Hopefully that goes negative. Oh, no. Okay, okay. so he's possibly taking one here. Mm hmm Thinking about rolling those dice. There they go. Okay, taking one. Yep. So we're into hole and Shara now. Yep. Next attack. He's going to make him re-roll one of those hits. And then Tristan's going to re-roll one of his blanks. And let's see what happens. Too much rerolls. For the exact same result we had before, and nothing. He still takes damage. After all that, Gallivanton. You reroll this die, and then you reroll this die, and everybody rerolls this die. Alright, so there's a Z. So it's going to be X Wing number 5. See if he can get Arc or a shot, which he looks like he's got. Checking range. So it's actually 4 shooting. Mm hmm. Okay. Oh, he's got. No, it's, five. On, yeah, it's on 5. He's got okay. Arc. Just clip in the back. So that's his entire list that oh other than the Z number Z, Z number yeah, the Z, but you know what? Are you sad about that? Not really. No, you don't care. No. Okay. I might, and I might get no shots that turn, so Yeah, I mean that's that's the dream, right? Yeah. So that yeah, so that X will spend his focus to see if he can get some damage through. Okay, so one damage pops on Shara. Yeah, slow death, death by that thousand cuts. That's it. Plink. Just down to two hull? Down to three. Down three. to three hull. Okay. Three. Okay, because the range two is still obstructed. Ooh. Thank you. So. Don't think about that, bud. Three hits. Mm hmm. Oh, no! Oh, that's a dead Shara. Oh, no. Yeah. So, how does Mike win this game knowing that he just lost his heavy hitter and only traded one damage on the Y Wing? The truth of it? I don't think he does. And that's not being negative to him. He's a phenomenal player. And he's that. says, this is an astronomical uphill climb. Now, I mean, anything is possible. Anything is possible. But right now, Tristan's sitting on only one shield gone on his gold squadron. Still one set of tracers. If he hard twos left and pulls focus on that on that lead Z and he gets tracers off on that B wing, that B wing goes poof. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a good turn to just turn in, be a little more aggressive than you have been. Mm -hmm. Try to go 5v1 on the B wing if possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's probably it. Now, Mike has a list that I think people would go, ooh, this list is not very good or weird, but honestly, I think it's a solid medical. Had Tristan been flying like an Imperial Ace, this wouldn't even have been a game. That's the thing, and that's exactly what makes Tristan's list so effective, is that it's an anti-metal list as well, in so much as that a lot of his ships do not care about the shenanigans and tricks and the trades that are going on in the top tier stuff right now. That's right. It's very agnostic to a lot of things. It's, it's relatively stress resilient. I mean... Sure, you could stress your X-Wings and then they can't carry turn fine, but with the M9G8 already out there before you start, your Y-Wings are already going to get a reroll. So the simple fact that your Stress Hog has a mod at all is huge, right? That adds to its longevity. Nobody cares about shooting at Zs because they're just Zs. They have Thread Tracers. No one really cares about them, but they don't realize until they see it in action what happens when you get hit by one and lit up with 100 target locks and just disappear. We've seen uh, Paratani where at the end of the day, uh, Manaru is shooting those two dice and your opponent has no more tokens for defense and damage goes through, right? So, and it's the same thing with those Zeds. Damage can go through. Absolutely. It's death by a thousand cuts, as you can see. Uh, and that's essentially what happened to Shara in that situation. So yeah, you're going to see some focus. I think you're going to see a target lock, maybe. We might see Red yes. Tracers fire off to light up that Z right there. Sorry, to light up the B-Wing. Yep, that's they it. They fired last turn. Uh, there's still a one that has one, though. Nope. They both fired last turn. No, one fired last turn. The other one fired the turn before. Oh, okay. That's interesting. He must have missed that. Yeah, I just got the note from Victor. Okay, so he must have missed the So he must have, uh, instead of putting it on putting it on the screen like he did last time because he didn't do it. Maybe, okay. Which makes sense. Sorry about that mix-up, yeah. He yeah. must have he must have missed with it on the first shot because no target locks were handed out. On the yeah, we didn't see any target off. locks go down. To explain, because I thought he rolled an extra set of dice and I wasn't entirely sure. Um, we do the best we can. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we do miss things. 
Our, it's called the Miss Hunter. Our long range scanner. Yeah, we're a scum <laughs> ship. My ship is not exactly up to snuff, so my long range scanners must be down right now. All right, so that's a beautiful setup right here. So there's, so does the, does the Y wing, just bump, one forward and thunk. I'm not really. Maybe he thinks the two turn is gonna clear. Mm, I think he knows no, it's he's not going, going for to. the two turn. Okay, that's interesting. I think it's gonna clear. Uh, I think it's not. Nope. No. Okay. No, not in the slightest. As long as he gets because a, a two turn basically lands the right right in between the two Z ninety fives. So. I mean, this is one of those situations where you could and probably should move this a whole bunch of ships, but guys. there, that's fine. There we go. All right, they're flying casual. Yeah. Right, yeah. I mean, that looks kind of, kind of, sort of about what it would be, anyways. Yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal. Again, you get three of those ships shooting that B wing; it's having a bad day. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, X wing five is probably going to do the same hard two to the left. I would assume. Yeah, I think that's a pretty safe assumption. Oh, we'll or he's going to do a hard three. All right. Okay. That's the style. You could do that. That's a, that's a decision. That's a decision you can make. You think the three was uh, just so you can get a little closer to the B wing, or do you think? I think it's. Uh, I think Tristan thought he was going to clear the two. Okay. And he would have a beautiful formation. So and see. had that hard two cleared on the Y, that three fits in perfectly, and he's yeah. right back into a gorgeous formation. However, the bump isn't really all that big of a deal because most of his ships are still all pointed the same way. It's a. It's a. It's a rebel swarm. They're kind of. Kind of sort of all going in the same general direction. Yeah, exactly. Um, not as precise as the Imperial overlords out there. No, it's not. No. But you make do with what you have at the time, right? And sometimes you just gotta bump into your own ships and rub some paint. Sometimes you gotta bump into your own ships. Okay, so Mike's trying to get his B-Wings into this game at some point by barrel rolling out allows him to get that hard two. Or he can probably advance sensors barrel roll and then hard two in. Uh, and he's finally gonna clear some stress. And for the one bank here, which is not where you wanna be. But unfortunately, there was just nothing he could do. The B-Wing nope. is just was stressed and is just so slow. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, <sighs> yeah, that B-Wing's going to go poof pretty soon. He's going to try to barrel roll for max range, give himself potentially out of some arcs. or yeah, try to get ranges. out of the, the, the range of uh, X-Wing 5. Yeah, looks like he'll be able to do that. Get out of Rookie 5's way. Mm-hmm. Not going to get out of range of uh, X-Wing 4 or uh, Z-95-1. Or even, I think he's actually going to be in three out of the five ships he'll be shopping. And I don't think that puts you in a better position for next turn either, if we're being truthful. Because next turn he's probably stuck in doing the two turn, maybe a three bank. Yeah. And that swarm is, even if they do a cash one bank, you're probably still getting two, three, four shots. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to be staring down the entire barrel of his entire ship. Like, there's just, it's just a wall of firepower coming your way. There's really not much you can do. The other B-Wing, B-Wing number two, would probably have to... Advanced sensors to barrel back to hard two in to get a good lane for the next move. Yep. Uh, otherwise, he's, or he could just hard two barrels one or the other. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter a whole lot. But with MNGA gone, his B wings no longer have any offensive re rolls because, you know, he could take actions. He could take focuses instead of doing the barrel rolling. But one of the strengths of the B wing is that ability to barrel roll. It does love living in tight quarters and and one of those, and that with that 2k turn sort of thing and that's why it's really fun to see them with the FCS because then they are very tight and they like that knife fighting style one of the few rebel ships with the barrel roll in fact mm -hmm. the only other one being the attack shuttle I think uh, the attack shuttle has it obviously the 2400 has it well uh, I mean, e -wing small, has it. small base shuttle yeah sorry the E-wing and the B-wing are the only two small base other than the attack shuttle I think that has that's it that's right A-wing only gets it if you're flying Jake So we got some evade dice rolling here. Nada. So he's gonna take two damage already. Come with some shields. That is not what you want to see. Was that a Z that just hit for two? Sometimes the Z hits for two. Oof. Uh. X-wing. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Mike. Not like this. Leave him alone. Not like this. <laughs> Leave him alone. He's just the boy. Yeah. So we saw three flash up, which is meaning that his X-Wing did three hits. X-Wing did three hits. So that's sh it's a shieldless B-Wing, okay. So I guess that means that the only two ships that were in range would have been the Z-95 number one and then the X-Wing number four. That's right. And that stands to reason that he still managed somehow to do five damage. <laughs> he, rolled, he rolled five dice and uh, did five damage. That's what you want, I guess. I mean, not if you're flying a B-Wing. That's not what you want. Yeah, <laughs> 
the dude already had it, uh, one shot gone, so it's down to two health. Oh, oh right, because that was from the rock. It took the rock. damage. You're right. You are correct. I mean, nothing is going much way in this game, it seems. No. No, not even not even close. Mike had a great day, though. He flew some uh, some fantastic lists. Yeah. So I think he's going to go home happy. He's been trying to make three T70s, I think, for a while. As we saw in the first round of Swiss, he annihilated this meta list with it. More than anything, he's actually been trying to make non-optimal rebel worthwhile. You'll notice he didn't have it. He, he's only a rebel player, first of all. It's all he collects, it's all he plays, it's all he runs. Um, he, didn't, he never runs bigs, which is also pretty awesome to see, too. He doesn't run K-Wings, which is awesome to see, too. He's just running the stuff that we all fell in love with from watching the movies and stuff like that, and it's really great to see. And it's, I mean, look at this final. Like, look, th other than a Z95, there isn't a single thing that isn't from an original trilogy. This is amazing. Yeah, he likes his ARCs 170s. You see him flying Nora every so often. He's also a fan of, uh, of the 2400. Mm -hmm. see him fly Dash sometimes, but I've also seen him fly, like, Vril a few times. Mm -hmm. and Vril's a fun ship. The day may come when he uh, he shows his face. I mean, I'm definitely running him this season of PTL because I'm going to try to find a way to win once with him. Stress spot, Vril. Uh, Eden, Vril, Braylon, Strom, and a thing. I forgot my list. I have it built somewhere. I'll, I'll look it up. And thing. And another ship. There's a third ship. I had it with an Outer Rim Smuggler before, and that was just garbage. So I'm going to try something else instead. Outer Rim Smuggler, not super value. No, I'll probably switch it to a K-Wing with, uh, with, uh, uh, with Thermal Detonators. I like it. Mm-hmm. So, what's I, Mike thinking here? Uh, I think he's thinking, why did I set up my ships where I set them up? <laughs> and that's not to insult him in the slightest diff difference. I think, I think maybe he undervalued Tristan's joust power, or he overvalued his ability to get out of the way and lead him through the rocks. Yes. Because I think I didn't think he realized that Tristan was going to come so quickly. Uh, wow, sorry, that sounded weird. Um, was going to fly so aggressively towards him, um, and. Uh, that's my second one for the day. Apparently. Happens to the best of us, uh, mate. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, I I think that's what he's thinking, right? Um, but in this situation now, there's almost no world in that we live in that that viewing survives this next turn. No, because if I'm Tristan, I just one bank everything and say, "How do you do? You're dead." Yeah, exactly. That B wings rocking to do health. I mean, one of his X wings is gonna get stressed, but boo hoo. The other two will, you know, the Z, the, both the Zads and the X, the lead X wing are gonna get focuses, and with their dice power, they're hitting something. Yeah. What Mike desperately needs is he needs to somehow survive this next joust, oh, or he could just do that. Aggressiveness, huzzah! You know what it is? I think he's making room for the hard two on the Y wing. Yep, that's exactly it. That Y wing hard too is keeping that Y wing in the game is huge. I mm -hmm. mean, it wouldn't also be a terrible strategy for Tristan to just aggressively send that Y wing after that B wing and start har harrying him back. I mean, if you could get the shot off this turn, the stress on it would be bad news mm. for Mike. So maybe he's not. Oh yeah, so the the, the hard two should probably slot in real nicely back into formation. Um, nicely Congo done. Line. Nicely done. Yep. And then if you if you two banks with that other X wing, he's back in formation yet again, almost like he <laughs> planned it. Tristan's putting on uh, a pseudo clinic of how to fly Rebel Swarm in, think, a, uh, in a fly casual yet fly legit sort of way. I love it. I think after this weekend, I'm probably going to try, try this some. List? No, not this list. Just some more Swarm. I mean, I fell in love with Swarm, and yeah. it's just been so long since I've played anything like that. Just how many upgrades can I put on a ship? Win. That's true. That is a way of doing it. So, th so maybe he heard what you were thinking, and he's trying to do exactly that. He's going to send his Stress Hog after the Y Wing. After, I think, after the B wing, I think it's a good call, especially if the B wing turns in this turn, turns around. You're gonna catch it with its pants down. So it looks like he's thinking next round. I think he's thinking, well, yeah. I've already gonna. These three ships will probably kill that B wing. I'm gonna set myself up for success to kill the next B wing. That makes the most sense. Had you turned in uh, the rookie number five, uh, let's say you did a hard two to ship left. That's two or, rounds before he can turn. Yeah, where's he going the turn after that? Especially when you only need to put two damage on this B wing, who's gonna move and probably be slipping into range one of some of these guys. Yeah, it just would have made no sense. It's complete overkill. Yeah. So I, does my barrel roll for a better lane, or does he stay where he is and try to pull a target lock or focus on something because he can still clear with a hard two next turn? I think you go for the target lock if possible. Try to give the other B wing some help. Just try to get some extra damage in there. Mm-hmm. Extra any damage in there. So if he's smart, he'll try to call target lock on the X thing he just pointed at just to get a free range check. Yep. Uh, and I think he is he's gonna get it. Yeah. Oh. 
Getting the target lock. So the B Wing is going where? Does it matter? He's K turning. You think the B Wing is going to K turn? I don't know. I mean, what does the hard two do for him? The Just same difference? K turn. Exactly. I guess the hard two makes more sense because at least he has an action. Maybe the barrel roll could get you out of the way. So of, uh, the fact the that he's before. thinking leads me to believe he's got a red maneuver in there because he's decided whether or not to advance sensors and what yep. action to do. That's my thought. Uh, does the barrel roll help you at all? Uh, uh, you know, if he advanced sensors, barrel roll to ship left and then forward and then does a hard three, he's out of there. Even the hard two, I was just going to say, if yeah. you barrel roll ship left forward, you might be able to squeeze out of the way and maybe take a shot on number five. And I think that's maybe what he's thinking right now. There he, it, comes the roll. That must be what he's got programmed. The simple fact that he's moving those target locks over leads me to believe he's going to go... Uh, so if, yeah. he does, if he goes ship back, then he has it, something planned that I don't it, realize. The ship back would mean he's going to make a tighter turnaround mm -hmm. that, around that X-Wing, which means that he might get out of the way, where if you go a little bit farther out, you might have... Yeah, you like, might have... ship forward all the way to the forward, if he had the, the two planned, yeah. was definitely out of most arcs. If he had the three programmed in... That would have been even better. Taking the time cautiously. Making well, sure I mean, this is... A, this is it, man. You could... Take I want, your time I want, him to, yeah. I want him to come back. Yeah, this is a super clutch turn for him now, so he should definitely be taking his time. Right, so the two turn, two. there it is. Okay, and he is going to dodge a bunch of arcs with that maneuver. That was sweet. Yeah, it was tight. Unless he done Mike. And it was good that he recognized that potential, and that's actually the power of advanced sensors. I mean, he could still die to that X-Wing. It is four dice at range one, so... Did he get out? I think he got out. Uh, not out of uh, X-Wing number... Oh, sorry, that's Z-95. Z-95. Oh, okay. So he's throwing three dice. But he is still eating three arcs, though. Three, two. Z-95-1, I believe, has him an arc. So two. Uh, so three. Oh, he dodged X-Wing 5. I think he dodged X-Wing 5 and 4. So he's only taking four dice, which is the equivalent of one X-Wing range one, which he would have been... You know, math might have worked out for him that way, and, and I don't know, that's... That was a cool move. Either way, it was a really cool move. Yeah, I agree. I think it was a very good choice for him to see that and try to go for it. I got to assume that he didn't think Tristan would come three forward. Was it a three that he did that turn? Or there's two banks? He did two banks. Yeah, so I'm guessing he probably thought yeah. that maybe he... he so just three hits, it. and there's a B-Wing. So one of these days, Mike should probably try rolling an evade. You got one die, and uh, there's more I misses mean, than hits. True, but he has rolled that one die like three or four times. He should try another one. Yeah, he should try a different die. That that die should die because that die is not doing anything for him. All right, Tristan, very aggressively trying to see if the uh, X wing could hit that B wing. <laughs> yeah, you kick him while they're down, but uh, simultaneous fire he does get to keep that B wing on the field till the end of shooting, until all ships have fired. Oh, you don't, the same pilots. Yeah, go, you don't right. you don't remove it until all pilots of the same pilots go. So, so you might as well try throwing out an ion cannon, see if you can do some damage or, or stress somebody out, or what do you do? You uh, just try to get some damage in to one ship. I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot, but I'd probably try to get damage in at this point. Put the stress down, yeah. get damage. I mean, making it go one straight next turn and putting one damage down doesn't do a whole lot for you. But the fact is that it is getting a tactician stressed, so he'll have two stress. If he ions him, that X-Wing is guaranteed stress for two more turns. Right, and it, the chance of him doing more than one damage on his attack seems slim, so maybe the ion cannon isn't a terrible choice. Either way, it's a dilemma that Mike's got to figure out on his end. So we'll see what he rolls. Uh, he rolls one hit only, so he could use some help from the dice gods. Hey, there Maybe. we go. More blanks. No greens today. So no greens. Ions. Let's no out. greens for anyone. Yep. Ion. All right. That makes the most sense. That that's a good call. It does disturb his uh, setup there. He's going to be forced going forward with that one ship. No, you want me to? What did you say? I can't hear you. Yeah, I got the signal. Yeah. So that was that was Miss Miss Manru over there, wifey of mine, letting me come in. That we were lucky enough to get some members of the Five Hundred First come down to visit us. That's today. right, it was super cool. Their costumes are amazing. Mm -hmm. We've got a we've got a scout trooper. We've got a AT AT pilot. Yep. And then we've also got o Omega leaders in the building with us today too. Omega leaders in the building was uh, she was kind enough to join us on the first three rounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she figured, you know, I'm out now, so I'm going to come visit you all. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty awesome of them to come by. And these guys are, if you don't know about the 501st, you definitely need to look into them. They're amazing human beings. What they are is a bunch of uh, fans who just take it upon themselves to make amazing costumes and then proceed to just 
volunteer their time to go all around the local areas yep. and just be awesome people showing up to events. Um, they're generally, they love to be involved with people who are doing stuff with charities and stuff like that, but they go to parties, they go to events like this, they come yep. out and just show how awesome people they are. And, and I mean, yeah, they're generally great yeah. human beings. From my understanding, they don't charge, but they do take donations for charity. They don't in the slightest. They don't want anything. They love it if you're they kind just enough want to, donations. They, that's it. they love it if you're kind enough to throw some donation down for certain things. But they also will just come out to be part of cool events. And again, they were really great. They've got thirty events booked uh, this weekend. That's they insane. And they still managed to find spare some members to. Three of them came as well. It's which, not even just one person. I know, and it's so awesome. So thank you guys very much for doing that. We yeah, love absolutely. you. That was awesome. If you want to check them out on Facebook? Uh, that'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, Feel free to donate to them, even if they're not coming to your event. Always something for a good cause. Uh, if you want to see their cosplays, there will be pictures of it up. Yep. Uh, once we get the weekend's photos up. Yep. Yeah, so all that. So, uh, B-Wing 2 did zero damage with his Ion Cannon as well. Uh, and I mean, in this situation, you got if you're Mike, do you... I mean, it's cool. He's probably going to play it out, but... I mean, it is what it is. There is almost zero chance in hell he can win this game. Because Y Wing 3 is just going to hard two in there, take that lane away. X Wing X Wing 5 is going to two bank, take that lane away. The Z's are probably going to. Everybody else is probably going to hard two ship right and just be like, hello, here's my entire list again. Yeah. And then here's, a... here's five arcs and stress and a whole lot of damage and you just die. I mean, do you just, just put yourself on a rock and just <laughs> give up the game at this point or no? Do you just. Keep uh, I feel like that's a salty move to make. Absolutely. So I think, oh, okay, so, or we could just cater. That's an interesting maneuver. I feel like if you're Mike, you either extend the hand or you play it out, but being, he's not a very salty person from no. playing a lot of games with him. He's a very good sport all the time, which I love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I guess play it out, why not? I mean, this is also a great call too, because Tristan lines up all his ships again to basically mean there's literally nowhere that B-Wing is going. Where it's safe. Yeah, I mean, that was a good call. Keeping now, the formation together or fanning them out and just taking whatever shots lay. If you're Mike, you probably decided to plan in a forward maneuver and you're going to advance into the barrel roll ship right yep. and come in around that rock, which is what I'm hoping you did. Yeah, it's probably... He probably clocked in some sort of a one bank, I would think, maybe? Or maybe, or maybe a one a, straight or, or maybe he went with a three straight. Ooh. But if he barrel rolled ship left, I think he'd hit the rock. No, ship right. Yeah, I mean, saying, but he Events. can only go that one direction if he clocked into three straight. Yeah, but I mean, if he does that, he's going to be coming around the back and he's flanking an entire ship, a set of ships. That's true. So he might not have wanted to point his B-Wing at the arcs of those two ships, knowing exactly where that X-Wing was going to be. Who knows? We'll see what he programmed. Only time will tell. A little dramatic pause here. All right, doing the barrel, so you're probably right, the straight maneuver. I think that's what I want to. That's what I want to gather. Or he could put. He could have a bank in there too. So it looks like a two looks, bank. Looks like a two bank. Mm-hmm. I think the bank made a lot of sense because if had he gone the other way, he could have banked around. It gives him a little bit of options here. Ooh, is he off the rock or is he fine? Looks like he's good. Ooh, now that's pod racing. Nicely done. Now that is pod racing. Nicely done. Nicely <laughs> done. I pretty. That was a nice move. All right. What does he do? He just. Shoot to see. Yes. Does he shoot? Shoot the Z. With, does he shoot with Ion Cannon? Or, oh, but Tristan does have initiative, so he is gonna get the fire first with two out of the two out of his ships, and that B wing is gonna be stressed again and never get another action. And oh, the rock next turn. No, oh, he's just safe off the rock. At least he's got. At least he has a rock for defense. Yep. Got it. Two dice. One hit. So, one so yeah. So. Um, all right. Tristan and, paid uh, off the dice gods for sure, I think, or no? He's just really, really good at rolling dice. Sold his soul to the dice gods. Yeah. Yep. So one damage on the B wing, right? Mm-hmm. No, two. Did he roll an evade on one of those? He were, yeah. There was an ah. evade. Yeah. So one damage on the B wing. Hey, things are looking up. He's starting to get some evades on his green <laughs> dice. All right, it's comeback time now, Mike. You can do it, buddy. All right. So here comes the first round of TLT fire. Let's stress him again. You wouldn't even think twice about that, all no, right? No, why wouldn't uh-huh. you? And then, Two hits. And yeah. Feels good. Yeah. Feels real good. It's like, Mike may have He's one too many M9, dice here. M9G8. Yeah, he, he does, does have, have too many dice. dice. Oh, he remembered. He's going to do it all properly. Right, trying it again. Huzzah! Oh, feels bad. He almost evaded it. We're not helping. All right. Second shot. Uh, that's all. Looks like a crit only. Yep. 
One hit. Oh, well, he's got that nine G eight and oh, two hits. All right, that was damage. Uh, that's one more damage. Yep. So that's plink, 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 plink. Oh boy. Well, the X-wing still has to fire. Range to obstructed. Yeah, it's probably range to obstructed. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So we're looking at one hit and one evade. Finally, Mike doesn't take some damage from an attack. Um, yeah. So, uh, we're look so Worlds is coming up now, and, uh, I'm more excited about Wave 11 coming out. Finally, Wookiees in space. I'm actually really stoked to see the Sea Rock come out, because I'm actually really excited. Yeah, I know that comes out before Wave 11. I know, I know they're not going to dynamically change the game, but the M3A pilots all have really, really cool abilities, and... I mean, having a couple of M3As already and having a third one, I, I'm, I'm tempted to pick up a couple extra ones on the secondary market just to have five you of them. You love having nine of, of every ship, don't I you? I mean, I mean, there's never not Boarding. a reason. Why is there never a reason to not have nine Z95s? Just can't use nine. Six Y-Wings. Can't use nine. Hey, I play Epic. No, you don't. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like ships. I love and the... Of, and of course, he just can't even get a damage out. I love the M3A pilot who can take the don't shoot token, the weapon disables token, so he can pull his munition back. Yes. He's so cheap. That's actually it... a she. Ah, she. Very good. Um, Three out of the four ships in the next wave are all female pilots. Oh, cool. So I don't remember the name, so it kind of helps a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, it's a very cool ability. It's a very powerful ability. It's another ship that your opponent has to think twice about not shooting. Especially if you give her prockets. Oh, and yeah. She gets a five dice attack, runs away, regens her procket, K turns, comes back in again, prockets every single time. Fin finally, it's time to have Fen Rao, Talon Bane Cobra, and, and uh, our yeah. new friend and have three five dice attacks at range one. And then you give her fearlessness, maybe? So Ooh. that could be interesting. That's what I'm saying. It's going to be some pretty interesting stuff coming out in that pack. And it's nice for scum players who. Well, it'll be nice finally that if you're playing an epic game with scum, somebody's going to fly something other than four robots. So that'll be interesting to see, too. That's that's not a friendly list. No, I don't play for four robots. That's why I don't play. Alone. That's why I don't play epic against scum players. <laughs> Leave um, them alone. Um, yeah, the Wookies are going to be awesome. The Ozatech is going to be a really cool platform. I'm really stoked to see that coming in there. I mean, I love the look of the aggressor, so I'm super excited about that coming out. I I, I understand some people's trepidation about the fact that you know TLTs were never supposed to be an imperial thing because imps were always about high skill, blah 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 blah. And if every faction has the same upgrade, then nobody's different, sort of a thing. But I think it still remains to be seen. There's going to be some interesting stuff that comes out of the aggressor. <laughs> um, the sink the the sink turret is curious. I don't really see an application in which you'd ever want to use that, but um, it is going to be uh, the unguided rockets. It's going to be really cool. Unguided rockets are amazing. I'm a huge fan of the TIE Bomber. Mm -hmm. I have five at home. It's probably the ship I have the most of, and I'm really hoping I can put five on the table and have a good game of X-Wing. I mean, I've got four of them already, so I'll be fine with running something else. Mind you, we saw Christian today run five of them and do pretty good, so maybe, yeah. uh, maybe I should put five of them on the table regardless. Yeah, I mean, you could even you could trade it out. You could have three of them with ungated rockets, two of them with tactician, and you get a lot of flavoring going on. I like putting uh, Vader and Kylo Ren on board of many of them. I mean, you could do that. That's a thing. It's fun. So it looks like Tristan's going to close the net here. Just, just line up a whole bunch of, uh... Though the thing is, because the other ships are stressed, the two, hard two to the left doesn't really do much from... I think Z number one goes straight and gets out of the way, and the rest of Tristan's ships do hard two to the left. So keep the you want to just hard two everything here and just go for the kill? I guess, yeah, you don't care about the bump at that point. You might as well have arcs pointing everywhere. I mean, he's only got a total of five hull left on that B-wing. Oh, here comes the straight maneuver. Yeah. I probably would have just turned them all on meh. See if we can, uh... Finish this up. Well, that, that that's, he's got a broken gun, so that guy's a little bit slippery. <laughs> he's, he's damaged. Yeah, he's he's got. He's damaged he's last damaged time he's on stream as well. Yeah. Mike is uh, directing the flow of traffic there. Yeah. So interesting. Why the, it's interesting that he just decided to clear stress and opting for a K turn next round. I guess. Yep. Oh, and then that makes sense. He wants the X wing too. So the X wing's allowed to hard too, but the Z ninety five's have sure. to go straight. Sure, buddy. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> You think the B's just going to go fast? Uh, yeah, because B-Wings are known for their speed. Well, I mean, the 3 straight is pretty fast for the poor little guy. He's going to crash right into that X-Wing if he did. Take a shot on a Z? Yeah, but that's probably what he wants at this point. Actually, that is potentially the best option that could go happen for him. Take as little damage as possible. Yeah, the 3 straight actually is the best move. I don't think he only did a 2. I think he only did a 2. Oh, it feels bad. It was a 3. Was it 3? 
No, it's a two. Oh, no, it's a two. It still bumps, okay. though. No. Oh, no, if it doesn't bump, it's worse. Oh, not like this. Oh. Oh, no. So that's not the best position for that B-Wing to be in. Um, He's a brave lad. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he didn't see the heart two coming at that point. Um, I mean, again, at the same point, it's you're in a situation where you know you've kind of already lost and you're still playing it out. Sometimes you don't make the most uh, top tier judgment sort of a thing, but on, good on him. He's played he's played well all yeah. tournament. Some very wonky lists. Yeah, sure. we've definitely seen some interesting stuff coming out of the out of our meta sort of a thing of our of our multi list tier format, and I think that's been really fun. We we have some some I think Devin did mention it earlier, but we can say it again. I think there was something like um, thirty five people used uh, all their lists at least twice. I thought he said that everyone except for one person used all their lists in the top once eight. in the top eight in the top eight, right? Yeah. And uh, so. twenty five people used each other. Uh, anyways, whatever it is, it was it was very healthy. A lot of variety. It was definitely a healthy. Yeah. Um, so it sure. seems like the way we did that, and I'm sure it was it was cool having. Ooh, okay, hey, there's an average roll, and yeah, just just bye bye. Okay, so we got one health on Mr. B Wing. Um, major major explosion. explosion. <laughs> Insult to injury. At this point, just blow up and just just go get a beer. Oh, he's still blue alive. Milk. Get a blue milk. Yeah, I think... Well, actually, that's just the first attack, though. He's got... <laughs> oh, no. He still hasn't shot the TLT Oh, yet. no. Oh, no. I mean, there's a chance that just... No. Okay, here comes uh, the Y-Wing with the terrifying primary. Ah, uh, there it is, and he's dead. <laughs> and there oh, we go. Defeated by a Y-Wing primary.